Welcome back to Morning Express. Now to set the tone for our discussion on the program this morning. We're now being joined by a media consultant and public affairs analyst, Dr. Everest Amwefile. Hello and good morning, doctor. Good morning, sir. It's wonderful to have you join us on uh, Morning Express this morning. It's my pleasure, sir. Well, very quickly, let's uh, delve into matters. The federal government has decided to set a tax exemption on LPG, CNG, and others, uh, a move that many people are saying will sort of greatly reduce the cost of living in the country at a time when people are grappling with uh, the harsh economic realities. What do you make of this new development? It's uh, absolutely a welcome development uh, because, uh, you know, the... Uh, the cost of energy is uh, too high on, on the people. So anything that can help us reduce the, the cost of uh, uh, energy is, uh, is a very welcome development. Uh, uh, the only thing is that um, uh, would the move be sufficient? Uh, it, it might not be, it might not be all right. There might be some other measures that the federal government needs to take in order to reduce the impact of the the cost of uh, energy because uh, it is something that uh, uh, that gets into every other thing uh, uh, there's hardly anything that you need that you do that uh, you don't require energy um, and uh, some of these things are not uh, uh, are not uh, manufactured here so you are talking about uh, uh, cost of uh, importation and then uh, other ancillary costs uh, cost. so if um, they reduce the the tax yeah. on this uh, product it will help us because um, uh, Nigerians are grappling with a uh, high cost of uh, production and if you don't uh, produce we'll continue to consume what uh, other people produce and that uh, makes our uh, economy subsidiary to other economics so it is a welcome development and we hope to see that uh, other the other measures are, are taken by the federal government now, now i believe i speak the minds of many nigerians when i say that perhaps what Nigerians are really looking for isn't a tax exemption on LPG and CNG, uh, which aren't, especially for CNG, which isn't really accessible to many people, but rather a reduction in the prices of, uh, of petrol or even a reversion to the uh, fuel subsidy that uh, was initially removed about a year ago by President Bola Metinubu. Yes, uh, you're very correct. Uh, the the use of uh, CNG and uh, LPG is not uh, uh, very is not popular in this country. Um, um, it's a pity that uh, we are talking about this at this uh, point in time. If the federal government was going to remove subsidy on petrol, on gas. Uh, well, especially petrol, because uh, the subsidy on uh, on on gas had uh, long been removed. But if they were going to remove the subsidy on uh, petrol, and uh, they know that uh, there are cheaper options, the uh, best option would have been to uh, to campaign, promote the use of this. Um, new i mean op options um and then to put in measures in place to ensure that uh, people have moved on to these uh, cheaper options um yeah i know that some years ago uh, the federal government started talking about uh, lpg and cng and they said oh they're going to put in some this measure and that measure to promote the use but it all ended in talks. There was no practical action to promote the use of these cheaper options. And so if they were going to remove the subsidy on petrol and they have cheaper options, 
it should have been the right thing to do to promote uh, the use of these cheaper options, the adoption of these cheaper options before removing the subsidy on on petrol. Because um, uh, at the end of the day, we see that uh, people are, are, are grappling with a lot of... Uh, because I know that it is, uh, having removed uh, this, uh, it is uh, difficult for them to, to reverse. And uh, in fact, we even understand that it is not the removal of subsidy that has uh, landed us where we are. The twin policy of um, of uh, floating the naira, because you still have to import uh, import uh, the petrol, petrol because we are not uh, producing. And even if we are we are producing the Dangote refinery, you still find that um, it is still priced in dollars. So I think the main the main issue has been the. Re the, the 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 floating of the naira without planning the economy properly now, now so do, if that, doctor do, do you think if that, that, any, do you think that perhaps this this new development from the federal government is coming due to the uh, emergence of Dangote refinery and the wonderful work they are doing in the oil and gas uh, sector to ensure that uh, you know we refine the products that we have here in the country in terms of uh, petroleum yeah, um, the, uh, unfortunately, the coming on stream of uh, Dangote refinery doesn't uh, hold um, any hope. It doesn't hold, um, hold uh, much hope for, for, for the country because uh, just about the time that the Dangote refinery was going to roll out uh, products, we had uh, about 50% increase in the price of petrol. And that tells you that, look, it is not uh, about Dangote refinery. There are things that use, that need to be done. There are two things, majorly. Uh, one, we need to define uh, what, where we, or what we should be doing with uh, our petrol, with the pe uh, petroleum that, um, that uh, God has endowed us with, how much of it are we going to benefit? Are we going to? Because if you price it in in dollars, it is similar to importing it. The only thing that you have removed is the cost of uh, transportation, the, yes. the cost of transporting um, refined products to the country, and uh, that's the only thing that that has been taken. But if you still price it in dollars, you will end up with a, a similar price. The second thing is that. Um, or maybe the most important thing is, um, you know, they said the 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 the, um, the subsidy on petrol was abused because of uh, transborder smuggling. And if we say, oh, okay, let's uh, give Dangote refinery petrol for domestic use at uh, 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 some price some cheaper price we still have to contend with uh, smuggling and so the major issue is what happens to transporter um um uh, smuggling is the federal government going to do something you know when uh, government or uh, governance is uh, is failing the people bear the brunt of uh, failed governance so if the, the, the government is failing at the, the duty of policing the borders, then it should not transfer the cost of that failure to the, to the people. And so if the government had stood its ground and policed the borders, because uh, patrol is not what you just... Um, uh, uh, transport across the borders with uh, jerry cans and uh, you need the uh, big vehicles and uh, so, so, so they must we have, have uh, we have should some be able to assistance uh, for these for all of this smuggling to you know happen in such large numbers without without much interception by the uh, security forces exactly 
So it is not uh, when the government failed and you say, oh, we can't uh, keep on subsidy because we are subsidizing uh, other economies. Why? Uh, I mean, in other things, uh, there are people where uh, the things are cheaper in other climes. Have we seen the inflow, the flock of uh, those uh, those products into into Nigeria? The answer is is, is no, because uh, other countries are policing uh, policing their borders. So why wouldn't shouldn't we be able to police our uh, police our our borders? There are some countries where agric agricultural products are um, are subsidized, and yet they are able to manage it within their 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 economies. So the failure of uh, governments to police uh, borders should not uh, should not be transferred to to the people. So the government needs to do some fundamental things, and uh, one is that uh, we need to understand how petrol or how uh, distance is required in, to um, uh, to. Uh, so grow our, 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 our economy. Yeah. So if we're going to have uh, 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 if we're going to have cheaper uh, energy as a result of at least we have this thing available, there has to be a way to make sure that it stays within the within our economy and not uh, uh, be subsidizing other other economies because they will not want to maybe allow the subsidy because they say, oh, cross-border uh, smuggling. But that's a failure of uh, uh, of governance. Now, now Dr. And Dr. the Dr. shouldn't Amo, be at the front. D Dr. Amafile, let's uh, take a look at CNG uh, as a whole. Uh, I know the, a lot of people say that it's not really accessible to them. I had a conversation with someone recently where he said that uh, he went to one of the conversion uh, centers and they told him it will cost him about 700 to 800,000 naira to convert a sedan vehicle to uh, you know, a CNG powered car and that it might take two weeks for them to even attend to him. And this and is somebody who somebody is, who you, is know, you know, queuing alongside queuing a lot alongside of other people. people. The government keeps the talking government about keeps CNG, talking about yet it appears that it appears it's more that difficult to convert, to convert vehicles to CNG-powered uh, cars, uh, cars and even more, even more difficult to get the CNG get itself. The CNG. Oh. You're very correct, uh, because uh, I also made some attempts uh, myself and uh, what your friend told you is a is a correct thing. I made an attempt whether I should be I would be able to convert uh, my car to CNG. Um, the time I made the attempt, I made the inquiry. Uh, the price was about uh, five hundred thousand. Um, but. Um, if I was going to be able to afford 500,000 Naira to convert my car to CNG, there were still some other considerations. One of the considerations at, the, at that moment was that it was only one place that I would be able to assess the, the CNG. One place, I think the Nipco filling station somewhere uh, on the airport road. That's and the, you would still have to queue for that? Uh, yes, you have to queue. You have to queue because uh, it's not, uh, oh, you go uh, and you pick it up immediately. No, you still have to wait for some time. In fact, they have to assess your car to be able to, to, to understand whether it is possible, whether your uh, uh, the conversion was going to be possible. And then there is also the attendant issue of, uh, of risk. How much risk is uh, involved if I convert this uh, this um, if I convert uh, my car to a CNG car? Um, what happens or what if they are, they, 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 this thing explodes? Because uh, I mean they are they are going to attach um, uh, something. Um, um, what do they call it now? A cylinder, a cylinder to your. To they are, your they're going trunk. to attach a cylinder to your boots. Yes, and it is from there that you so. Uh, you, how much of the risk are you willing to take? And uh, not many people are willing to take uh, take uh, such risk. Then, uh, like you said, uh, uh, on airport road, really, there are some vehicles, big vehicles that have converted to CNG. If on some days 
when you're passing that place, you see a lot of those big vehicles lining up. I made the inquiry and find ah, why are these uh, vehicles uh, lining up uh, here? And I understood, or what I, I was told was that uh, they are waiting to get the CNG yes. uh, gas. They have converted to CNG and they are waiting to. And you see a lot of them, some of them stay hours in that place waiting for the CNG. So uh, is this something that we are going to, uh, I mean, if you convert, uh, you, uh, you're going to wait, your, your waiting time is going to, is going to be long. And if it is only one place in, in the city that you're going to have it, then it, it, it's an issue. So that's why I said that we, it, it, is not, it is wrong to put the, the cat before the house. Some of these things are uh, some things that we are supposed to have uh, looked at before we make the proclamation. Uh, subsidy is gone. So there are so much that had not been done. There is a failure of policy. There is a failure of uh, of uh, tests, and it is difficult to to correct, especially when the government has ego, and will not admit that it had uh, it had made a mistake. If we don't have uh, uh, ego issue, we could say, ah, oh, we made some mistake. Let's um, let's reverse and and do some proper planning and before implementation. So, so, so you implement in, before in a, you plan, you have a problem. In a nutshell, Doctor, there, there's still a whole lot of work that needs to be done uh, following the removal of fuel subsidy as it is greatly impacting the oil and gas sector in the country. Uh, absolutely. So much work uh, needs to be done and uh, without if such work is being done. In what? fact, without if... Uh, uh, if there is a willingness to do so, so I mean, some of uh, those work that uh, needs to be in place. Well, let's hope the, so, the, the government really puts ego aside and does the work like you have rightly advised. Well, let's uh, move away from uh, stories around oil and gas and focus on insecurity, which has been a very, very big issue in the country especially in the northeastern part of the country where uh, the Boko Haram insurgency has been raging on since 2009. And of course, the banditry, the most recent one in uh, the northwestern part of the country. Now, Senator Ali Ndine, uh, representing Borno State, uh, said recently urged the, the uh, president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to engage mercenaries in the fight against insurgency and terrorism in the northeast. This is coming uh, in the wake of a recent attack by Boko Haram members where some farmers were killed and about five farmers or so were also abducted. Uh, what do you make of this development and the continuous uh, fight against insurgency that seems to have not have an end in sight? Okay. Um, uh, did you say that uh, Ndume asked the uh, government to engage the Senate? The, he has the, asked the president to engage mercenaries in the fight against terrorism. Oh, okay, mercenaries. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That, that that's very correct. He, yes, he said. Uh, uh, he gave an example it, 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 that it is something that had been done before. He said that the government should emulate uh, the present government should emulate uh, President Jonathan, who engaged uh, mercenaries and um, were able to clear. Uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the Boko terrorists. Insurgents. And um, I think he's given a good and practical advice. Because it had been done in the past. We saw that before the, I think, it, it was, was it 2015 elections? Government postponed the election for about uh, six weeks. And within that six weeks, they brought some sanity to the northeast and investigation said oh okay they brought in mercenaries if mercenaries can help us fight boko haram i'm all, all for it because the it, it's 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 having a ripple effect on the economy we cannot uh, do farming we cannot there, there is so much that can be done in the atmosphere of uh, of uh, peace, in the atmosphere of uh, of uh, safety and security, 
So if we need to engage mercenaries, I'm all for it. No, Ndume, no. Ndume yes, is, uh, is, is, is right in, on, in that advice. But if we, uh, we have also had people say that uh, what is lacking is, uh, is political will, that our military, our secretary, uh, men and women are capable of, uh, of doing it. So if, it, if, if that uh, um, assertion is correct, then we should be able to muster the political will to deal with uh, uh, the terrorists that have been a menace to a nation. And uh, Ndome is um, a voice uh, from the Northeast. Before it was that, oh, the Northeast, the political leaders, the elite in the, that, that place, we are against uh, against uh, 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 the 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 war against terrorism. Yes. Now you have had. You know, I mean, one of the prominent voices from there is saying, if it requires uh, using mercenary, please use mercenary, and there is that, that price wouldn't be too much to pay in order to have uh, security. Well, well, Dr. Olet, many people will be wondering, why do we need to pay such a heavy price of hiring mercenaries when we have an entire armed forces? The, uh, the Nigerian army, the Air Force, the Navy, the police, security officials everywhere in the country, yet it appears as if the fight against insurgency is one that the armed forces don't seem to be winning. It's uh, it's continuous. I mean, Boko Haram insurgency has been raging since 2009. That's quite a long time. Why are we still at this stage where we can't win this? Well, um, a number of uh, reasons can, uh, can um, explain that. Um, at the beginning, they say, oh, okay, it's, uh, it's a new kind of uh, warfare. It's a guerrilla warfare. Our armed forces have not been used to this kind of, uh, this kind of warfare. But like you have pointed out, it is now about uh, 15 years. And that's a sufficient time to be able to gain capacity to deal with this kind of uh, warfare. So 15 years are enough for us to have gained the capacity. Um, then there is the issue of um, uh, sabotage. There is the issue of uh, sabotage. Uh, some local forces, uh, uh, um, who may want the warfare to continue. For some personal uh, reasons, there are there, there, there are some people. <laughs> um, there is a proverb in my place. It said that when the land is not uh, uh, when the land is not good, it is the benefit of some some elders. There are some people that are benefiting from the insecurity we have in our nation, and unfortunately, I think the military happened to be. The beneficiaries, especially some people that are benefiting from the budgets, huge budgets of uh, uh, that are earmarked um, for fighting insecurity, and some of these uh, budgets are not accounted for. And if we deal a deadly blow on insecurity i mean on those terrorists some 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 pipeline has been closed for for some people so there are some that would want this thing uh, to to continue and there are some other beneficiaries those benefiting one way or the other there is a whole chain of people benefiting that will want to sabotage the efforts and so if you are going to set them aside and bring in mercenary, so be it. The only thing is that, I mean, the, you get results. And if this result justify the, the method you, 
you employ in, in getting it, I think uh, we will be good. Well, well, Doctor, what would you say about um, the recent order by the president to service chiefs to sort of move to Sokoto State to ensure that they end the banditry and kidnapping in the state? Now, this order also applied to the Minister of uh, Defense and former uh, Zamfara State Governor Bello Matawale to ensure that they curb any form of insurgency, banditry or kidnapping in the northwestern region. How much of uh, progress are we going to be seeing in the coming months uh, following this uh, new development? Well, the, the thing is, um, when others are given the way monitor implementation are there consequences for not implementing a presidential a presidential order if there are no consequences then the tendency is that uh, we would uh, come back uh, one year two years and three years we'll be still be talking about the same thing the same order you remember when um uh, President Buhari took over. One of the first things that he did was to order that uh, the I think is it the tactical headquarters should be moved to the epicenter of uh, of the problem uh, in the in the northeast. So this order is not uh, anything very different. You remember when there was a, a problem in uh, Benue State? The president ordered that the IG of police should move to Benue State. And the president, I mean, the IG didn't go to Benue State. And the president didn't know that the IG didn't go. And it was later on that, oh, the IG, didn't, there was no consequence. So if there are consequences for not taking the president or that the president is supposed to be the commander in chief so if there are no consequences then things would continue as they have been the matawala you have been you have mentioned you have seen the the exchange of force between him and the governor of uh, um Z Z Z Zanfra State. State. Zanfra State, yes Yes, he's the, he, I mean, he used to be the governor, now he's a minister of state. He's the minister of state for defense. When there is uh, such a clash between him and the governor, you think that uh, uh, something good is going to come out of it. Except, the, I mean, the president spells out, look, if you don't do this within this period of time, something is going to happen. And he gives the order to the generals. Somebody said, ask the generals, tell them, give them order, give them timeline, and ask all of them even to relocate to that place that will see things change. So others in this nation, you know, governments is uh, fond of talking, but uh, it is not very good in, in doing. And this government has not been anything different. Well, so when others well, can be flouted and there are no consequences, then there is we don't expect there's going to be uh, there, there's going to be anything different. Nothing good can come out of it. Well, doctor, we have just about uh, three four minutes to wrap up on this discussion. But wow. well, there's something else I want you to react to before we uh, let you go. Uh, the members of the House of Representatives are, have rejected the recent honors conferred on the Speaker, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, uh, the conferment of the CFR position by the President, saying that he's above the CGN and equal to the Senate President who was conferred with the uh, honors of GCON. Now, uh, we know that they are both referred to as the upper and lower... Uh, you know, chambers, uh, are we seeing a rift between members of the House of Reps and perhaps the Senate? Well, uh, um, I think uh, the, the Reps have a point. If in protocol order, I know that when that uh, law came about protocol, the judiciary were not happy that uh, 
they are placing the speaker above the CJN. That the CJN is the leader of the judiciary. But for now, that is the order. This, um, the speaker is above the the is the speaker is above the CJN. So why would you give the CJN, GCON, and give this this other person? The, the, the speaker uh, was conferred. The speaker was conferred with CFR while the CJN was conferred with GCON. I, I, I think it is wrong. I think it is wrong. So they have a point. They have a point, but then um, it is a nation where people are giving honors based on the positions they have attained or they are occupying, not on what they have done. Each of these people are conferred with this because of the positions they have they are occupying. I think it is wrong in the first place to give these people position. I mean, uh, honor based on on positions they manipulate themselves to to get into. Not because of extraordinary leadership we have seen them show. All I mean, it is wrong in the first place. But if that is what uh, what the law says, then I think it is wrong for you to put to give a higher honor to the speaker. I mean, to the CJN over over the when speaker. in in order of protocol, the speaker is higher than 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 that office. But if we can. Move away from uh, move away from uh, um, honors being conferred based on positions and based on what people have done. Uh, I think it will be a better scenario. And uh, if you ask me, they don't merit these honors that are being conferred on them because we've not seen what has the Senate President what has he done? What, what, and this woman well, like, is only I assuming this, office. This we is... have not seen. I have not no, seen that. Uh, this is the, at the discretion of, of the president to confer these honors. And yes, it is not the person, but rather the seat uh, that uh, the honors are being conferred on. As long as they occupy the positions, certainly uh, the positions, the conferment of GCON uh, or CFR is a necessity as the law stipulates. Yeah, so if you, if that is the if it is just conferred on position, so why why would you cheat the speaker if he's the number four citizen? Why would you cheat him and give him something lower? It it it, it is not a, it is not right. That's a it, big if question. it is conferred on positions, then any person that occupy it should get it. Well, that's, that's a big question. I believe the federal government needs to answer. And uh, I, I didn't get you, sir. I believe that's a question the federal government needs to answer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You don't uh, so don't subjugate the the position of the speaker, even though I don't know what they are talking about. That the CJ, I mean, the speaker is equal to the Senate uh, president. Well, if it is so, according to the law, so be it. But I see a point, a merit in their argument. That the CJN is lower than the than, than the speaker in terms of uh, national protocol, so why give him a higher give the CJN a higher a higher honor? It is not uh, it is not right. Well, well, Dr. Everest, I'm afraid this is all time will uh, permit us to dissect some of these uh, national issues making the rounds in the news. But I must thank you so much for availing yourself for this very robust discussion. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank, thank you very much. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. Well, that has been Dr. Everest Amwefule, who is a media consultant as well as a public affairs analyst. And he has been speaking to us in issues surrounding the tax exemption on uh, LPG and CNG as well.